Jay here for Stratford Paddock. This is the Paddock Podcast, and joining me today, we've got an absolute plethora of the Manchester United Titans. Mm -hmm. We've got Joe McGrath here. Hello. Good afternoon, you're all right? Yeah, I'm not bad, how are you? I'm How's very, your eyes? You were moaning about your nice. eyes a minute ago. It's, 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 it's airy in this room, isn't it? It's the air, airy? Yeah, the air comes. Oh, right, I airy. it's airy. So I was like, oh, I'm going to have dry eyes, but you know, I've, I've overcome it. I'm feeling good. I'm proud of you. Thank you very yeah, much. You're looking well. Um, Are you laughing at? What was that, what was that for? <laughs> I wasn't being sarcastic. I'm being sincere. Um, also, laughing at me over there is Ronaldo Brown. No. You've not been well either, have you? I, was, I wasn't laughing at you. I was laughing at Joe. Why well, was he? Well, well, he's, uh, not with him. I was laughing at, at him. him. Oh, that's yeah. tight. He wasn't laughing with you, mate. He's laughing at you. Yeah. yeah. Get you. You sweat. ate me, you. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, I fucking love you, Joe. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, yeah, Ronaldo Definitely. Brown, you've not been well, have you? How are you feeling? You made New York great, I remember. That. Yeah. Oh, hello. <laughs> Make it all great. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been, I've, I've been apart from being a little bit under weather I've been I've been pretty good yeah it could have been worse if we, we got smashed yesterday but at least we didn't I know I mean, that's that's the thing you know at least we got something out of the game at, at half time I didn't think we were going to get out I thought we were going to get battered also for his second appearance on the channel it's Mr Sam Marshall how are we doing Sam not bad um, roasting you're roasting, right? I've got my dad, I've got my granddad's jumper on. You're roasting. You've got dry eyes. Yeah, I got dry eyes. I was a bit cold, but now I feel all right. So what should we do? Should we just lower the temperature a little bit? Because you're turn a bit that, hot. Turn that bugger back on, alright. Hey, can we turn that off? You got your granddad's on. jumper on? No. All oh, right. Not actually, he's not. He's not wearing his granddad's clothes. <laughs> he's making a joke about the fact <laughs> he's got a bit of a granddad jumper on. Uh, make sure you dive into the comments in the chat and let us know what you think about all the latest Manchester United news. And if you're not doing already. Can you hit subscribe, please? We want to get to 750,000 subscribers by the end of the season. And with your support, yes, we can get there. Um, we are going to be talking about VAR, about decisions, because it just feels like we've not been getting the rub of the green really lately, have we? With no. some of these decisions. Some of them you can go, that could have gone either way. And it always seems to go against United when it could have gone either way. And this has kind of been the thing for the entire season. I don't yeah. think this is recent. And there's other ones where you go, actually, I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's right. And there's other ones as well, just to add sort of more petrol onto this fire, where people or teams will have decisions that sort of go against them. Or no, sorry, where they'll get a decision and you'll see United have exactly the same thing where we don't get the decision. So there's just no consistency there. There's no consistency. There's lack of fairness. And the idea that VAR has sort of ended controversy and made things more sort of set in stone is just ridiculous. I think now yeah. it's just, I think it's killing it, VAR. I'm, Even away from VAR. United this weekend with Wolves and, and, and just looking back at the entire season, it, I feel like there wasn't as much last year, but for some reason, certain changes they've made to the game have meant that it's so in the public eye, the scrutiny of VAR. You can't escape it. I mean, even going back all the way to the first game of the season when there was the arguments about Onana and the penalty in the box for, for, for Wolves. I mean, that's right at the start. But I look back at the Tottenham game, I look back at the Arsenal game away from home, and I'm thinking certain things, not just right now, just never seem to have fallen for us this year. No, they haven't. And it, like you say, it goes back to the beginning of the season. I mean, yes, the Wolves game is the one where you go, OK, we got away with one there. Yeah. But we've been paying for it ever since. I mean, there's been so many decisions, and I don't want to say I just moaning about decisions, but you look at you think a lot of these were vital, uh, vital times in the game or in vital games. Go back to the uh, um, the Spurs game, I think was the first one, where you had the Romero handball when Garnacho had a shot. It's blocked, doesn't get given as a penalty. About three weeks later, almost the identical yeah. scenario at the the Emirates, same player Romero against Arsenal, and it's a penalty. And you're just not seeing that level of consistency. And it, it's really frustrating. Ronnie, what have you made of it this season with United Decisions? Because I think me and you was on the Arsenal watch along at the beginning of the campaign. And yeah. there was the Ganacha one, which yeah, that's I still, still can't tell if that's offside or not. Uh, I, I don't know. I think lesser, it's even less of the Ganacha one. I think it was more the, the Hoyland one as well. That and game, he, yeah, that game. where he was pulled down when by he, when he was Gabriel. Grappled. Obviously, off that goal would have been given prior to VAR times, but it did show the lines and it showed that it probably was just a fraction off, but it was so, so tight that I think maybe this was just to introduce something where... I, I've looked at it a million times, but I benefit, still can't tell. I can't tell. Do you know what I mean? I, like, I, I get you say like, it was fraction but, 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 like. but didn't he actually draw the lines and show that it, it, it was a little bit in front and it was... And he, like, that's the reason why... It, was, when, it went on for a long time and then when you looked at it, it still just looked like, they, like it was almost... In, or for me, I, I don't know, I just thought you can't really tell. It could have gone either way that... And it took so long as well. It took longer than normal. 
I it forgot because like because it, it did friend. it did show they drew the lines and it showed that like Ganacho was probably just just about it was like a, it was minimal but just about off unfortunately because that was that's the difference between going was it two one up and actually losing the yeah. game three one in the end in stoppage time. Um, I think a lot of the decisions are like you said though they're, they're very much fifty fifty ones that we haven't we've seen go our way where. I think some of them is I feel like the Delo and the Anthony one or if they weren't given and then they were reviewed I don't think it would have been overturned to be given so that's kind of where my little um, problem with it comes because it feels like if the referee referees are bold enough to, to make the correct decision then they should but I think VR very much just likes to go with <coughs> what the on-field decision was but in my opinion I think the Delo penalty the Anthony penalty and the wan Saka penalty as much as you can complain that they probably are bad decisions from VAR that could have gone our way, I still think there's there's some part of it that's a bit self-inflicted though, because I think all three of those players kind of contributed to. I know. Allowing that I'm not to be disputing made, that. You know I mean, mean, going to ground like like Wan Bissaka yesterday, going to ground when Elliot's running into a load of United players, he's not really going anywhere. Oh, was, was, trouble, was, was silly. Was like the low lost his foot in the whatever. Again, it's some, you can argue it's unfortunate. It's Anthony clumsy. allowed Cucurella yeah, to get the goal, get the goal side, of side of it. There's all yeah. some level of culpability. But for me, if you're going to ask, put it into a binary question, do I think it's a foul or not? I don't. And going back even further, like you can even argue that, okay, all of them are 50-50 or all of them are debatable. But there's ones where I've literally seen the same foul being ignored by VAR. Look at Hoyland on um, Rodri, was it? Yeah. At Old Trafford. Now, over the weekend, we saw... Uh, Gavardiol was it on Eze yeah. much worse much worse than what Hoyland that, did yeah. he's all over him yeah. and it's not a penalty now okay that's fine if it's not a penalty but why was the Hoyland one given as a penalty then there's just, that's, that's the issue for me is the zero consistency and all the 50-50 ones seem to have gone against United and all the times when United have had these decisions where it's a penalty against Hoyland or it's, a, it's not a penalty against Hoyland when it's Gabriel there's no, there's no consistency there. it seems it's like We've, we've been had over. I don't get why, especially with the offsides, we don't have, do you remember, was it the World Cup where it was automated and it would show you an exact like photo of where everyone was? There, were, there was no debate over whether anything was offside. If it was offside, it was offside. No. I don't get, it's literally the best league in the world. I don't get why we haven't got that yet. I really don't get it at all. No, That's I don't either. I mean, I mean, uh, you, you look, but we'll look back at some of these at the results uh, and some of these moments, and we'll, we'll be we'll be gutted by them. But it is the it's the consistency that has just not been part of the refereeing this year. Where all right, maybe one, maybe a couple of our penalties have actually been deserved. But then make sure you give that same situation for another team who might even be our rivals one day. Why don't you give them? A penalty against them and not let them off. Why are we getting the issue? The issue of VAR, bombarded? yeah. The issue of VAR is um, it was it was implemented to try and kind of eradicate human error. But then again, it's humans that are making the decision mm. and operating VAR. So you, all you're getting is uh, referees are getting less of an excuse for the bad decisions they're making, but then still making the bad decisions. And there's so, I mean, so many so there's so more th- bad decisions, so more people making the decisions as well. I believe exactly. I believe VAR, VAR should be able to work as like an entity, but I don't. It's more incompetence from the people that are actually using and implementing VAR rather than the actual system itself. In my opinion, do you, do you know what's do you know what's up wrong with that as well? As I agree, I think it's almost make it makes you more angry. Like I, I think it's forgivable if a referee on the pitch and it's a split second decision. And he's looked at it once, and he's gone. That's a penalty, mm. or that's not a penalty. I think whilst I'll still, you'll still obviously be annoyed if it's a decision you don't believe in or you think it's wrong. You can understand that. It's when you've got these teams of people sat in a room looking at it for three and a half minutes, yeah. while well, you stood there as a fan, or you sat here as a fan, or at home, whatever, waiting for the game to restart, waiting to see what's happened, and they're still coming out with a decision you, you don't agree with. That's why it's so anger-inducing. It's not just whether the decision's right or wrong. It's the amount of time and the amount that's going into getting decisions which are still wrong. I mean, at least with a referee, you can go, well, he's he's got a look there from 10 yards or 20 yards or whatever it is away and make a split decision. But some of these are t- decisions, they're taking ages. Do you think, you've obviously played football at the highest level, do you think mm. the rules are too broad so it's more of an opinion-based thing? Do you think they should be more precise with the rules? Uh, do you know what I mean? So if there's any, if there's any sort of contact... 
and I think in this situation, I f- uh, that's it's a f- red card. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think there's a. I think as Sam said, there's a lot of um, opinion when it comes to like um, a challenge, whether it's aggressive enough yeah. to be a, a sending off or whether there was enough uh, n- enough contact with something quite minor inside the box, whether it's a penalty or not. Where it is on the leg. But, but where it is on the leg. But I feel like I feel, <laughs> I feel like the goal, for example whether the ball's crossed the line and like, they've got a watch that tells them. Like Hawkeye's like, is automated, infallible, isn't it, almost? Automated. Yeah. I think they should probably introduce something automated for offsides then. Yeah. And that would take that away. But VAR's always going to have an element of human error in it because it's referees in a booth that are looking at a replay, deciding whether they believe it's a foul. Do you know what I mean? While it's been slowed down. And I think sometimes with VAR, when they slow stuff down, it, it almost, almost looking at stuff in frames, it kind of... Yeah. takes away from what it can look like going at full speed because even the Delo one when you slow the Delo one that's what's strange about the Delo one because he didn't really make contact at all really well he initially clips him but then that's not when he, the contact the penalty was given for it's after it when you slow it down it looks like he didn't touch him at all but at full speed it looked like a penalty when we was watching it mm. we thought oh shit that's a penalty when you look back on it he didn't really make much contact with, with him but sometimes as a winger I know um, that when you've you, you're running that speed and you go past a fullback, any kind of little touch or, or deterrent can send you to ground. And when you VR stuff, when you slow it down, it almost looks a look like a completely different incident almost sometimes. I think sometimes yeah. as well, with the whole slowing down thing, it can work both ways because we saw it last season. I think it was, was it Casemiro got a red. And I think the times when you slow it down, it looks it can look worse yeah. than yeah, what it, it is. Looks worse than yeah, because yeah. like I get your point with that where it, it can slowing it down can can alter how it looks in in the sort of in one way. But also if it's say like a a, a sort of a challenge, and you slow it down, it looks mm. horrendous. But when you play it in real time, you might always oh it's only a little bit yeah. late or he's he's took the ball and it's actually not that bad. And I think sometimes that doesn't help when you've got this slowing down. And also just from a logistics point of view, constantly watching replays slow it down, it's just adding more time that it's yeah, taking yeah, as yeah. well because. It's spoiling the enjoyment of the game it for me. Out the celebration. It does, doesn't it? Like the like, one of the lads I was with on the, uh, on the city, um, the uh, Liverpool FA Cup game. He was convinced Marcus's goal equaliser there was an handball by McTominay. So he, he didn't like, celebrate. No, he was like, oh, and it's like I've had it a few times where you're in the ground and you, you don't celebrate. Mm. You, you think, oh, or well, not even in the ground when you're you know on, at home or on the watch long. We've done it a few times where Joe Smith's not celebrated yeah. because he's like, no, there's a. There's a thing yet. I said that. I said that on the weekend. I think now when a goal goes in and it's a little bit tight, you don't know whether yeah, to you celebrate because you, you, you don't know whether it's going like And then you look like an idiot. I know, obviously, we're on camera, so it's different. Yeah. But even even when you're not on camera, you still feel a bit stupid. Yeah. Going I, berserk, I, I, and I then it like find, like you find out actually that wasn't a goal. Do you think like the the, the constantly fine tuning the, the some of the rules, aren't they, to to bring in VAR because it's such a sort of like VAR is here. I think it was a bit of a controversy last season a lot with handballs and like handballs were getting spotted a lot and they were causing a little bit of a stir. I wonder if like the next part is is the the penalties inside the box, the physicality inside the box and maybe they'll fine tune it next year. But then that's a little bit too late for someone like Tenag, who, you know, we don't know if he's gonna be in charge of United next season because of the way he'll finish at the end of this at the end of this campaign. So it's like I don't know, change if, if something's not right, don't wait to the end of the season to start fine tuning the rules. Get into the, the the referees now and tell them that this is how we're looking at things differently. I, I do think this could go too far though. Mm-hmm. If we start saying any contact inside the box is a penalty. It's going to get to the point where no one. It's going to be. A, it's going to become a non-contact sport when you're anywhere yeah. near Inter- the box. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Interestingly, I think people say um, if it's a foul outside the box, it should be a foul inside the box. People said a foul is a foul no matter where it is. I sometimes partly disagree with that it's though. Different in it because I think the jeopardy is so much worse. Like the jeopardy is a lot higher in side the box so I think it does need to be ref a little bit differently but a lot of people will argue oh that would be a foul outside the box though I as a mm. personally as a fan think I don't think it should be ref exactly the same I feel like a foul in the box and a foul outside the box should have a little bit of a, a different outlook on it. Foul. do you know what I mean because you get let off a little bit more inside the box or you get as in like or you get penalized more if you do it not the like box. not like loads different but I think so it, some t- there's some decisions that you'll get outside the box in terms of being clipped or like slightly pulled etc but I do think inside the box it has to be refed a little bit differently yeah, because yeah. What, like penalties and p- goals can completely swing games mm. swing titles swing top oh, four relegation I think 
basing it on like a little slight tug of a shirt, etc. That might have been given outside the box, in the box, give a penalty. I think there has to be a little bit of a difference there. I think referees do ref it like that anyway. Mm. But I do hear a lot of fans say, or oh, that would be a foul outside the box though. But I kind of s- disagree with that notion. I, I hear you on that front. I, I, I get that. It's just some of the decisions we've seen and are just strange to me. Like the the things that they're ignoring. Is there anyone in thick though? Is it just <laughs> well, I saw the weekend. Wasn't there a lad at, um, against Spurs who got punched in the stomach by James Madison, and that was like was was ignored. What what? Sorry, what was that? Mason Mount. He plays for United. No, plays. Forest, forest, yeah. yeah. No, we're just getting heckled here by yeah. people <laughs> shouting. <laughs> it's like it's like random United play bingo over there. Well, what did he <laughs> say? Someone just sound Mason Mount. <laughs> Madison, yeah, Madison. Yeah. He's got confused. That. I just said, said Madison said punched that. someone and then the shout from the production desk it, was Mason Mount. Not and then he went back to Madison. It's, it's great to have you listen. Yeah. It's because he's across the comments so he's not really listening to right. oh, time That's time very helpful time on a live video. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Thanks thanks for clearing that one up. Um, yeah, did you see it? Yeah. I think he punches him in the stomach, doesn't he? And he's like... And then, yeah, what yeah. did you go back to it? <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry about it. And the guy's like, he just punched me in the stomach. <laughs> What's going on here? Like, it's just, it just seems crazy, to, to be honest with you. Uh, Sam Strand in the comments says, no evidence of violent conduct, VAR said about Madison. Unbelievable. Just digged him in the yeah. stomach. What did they say about Mount? Oh, yeah, there was another one. Brian Casey says, didn't Van, uh, Virgil van Dijk grab someone oh, yeah, but by yeah, the well, throat by the front, so last week? Two, nothing done. And Bruno got... Um, he got sort of strangled, didn't he? Was it against, oh, I can't remember, it was against, not Luton, I can't remember one of the teams we played recently, where Bruno had someone had his, the, in by the throat. Again, no action. We saw it last season with Casemiro. He got a red card for Will Hughes when he grabbed him, didn't he? And also the, the red card he got against Southampton as well was quite harsh in my opinion. So it just seems to be this this lack of, um, oh, was it Forrest, thank you, someone said it. it was, yeah, it was Bruno against Forrest. Lack of consistency, that's yeah. the really annoying thing. I think that's one of the ones that could be fine tuned where you say, if you grab anyone by the throat, it's a red card. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because then it, yeah. that, that takes cool. out the opinion of it. Yeah. If you go near anyone's throat, it's a red card. Yeah, I get that. That, I mean? that makes sense. That can be fine tuned. Because but it's, it's then, also, grabbing someone by the throat, there's no argument there. Yeah. You can't go, I was just going in for a tackle, I was a little bit late. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> if you literally grab someone by the throat, you're obviously kicking off. There's, There's no like grey area there. What do you think about? Uh, and obviously, re- referees get a little bit of stick for for those key moments. But in general, in the games uh, uh, for this season, I felt like in the big games in particular, referees have sort of let football just crack on a little bit. You know, there's the tackles that you might have thought would have got pulled back a little bit, or there's the, the there's the early yellow cards. I feel like in the bigger games, I've just seen referees sort of be not not relaxed, but sort of just let football happen for a Arsenal little bit. Arsenal City was like that. Arsenal, Arsenal City, City was, was massive like that. Wasn't it? Like that. And there I was kind loads of, think, of tackles flying in. Yeah, and he was having none it, of it with yellow moment. cards. It was, it was great. Good. And it was I'm great. thinking, right, that's good. Find yeah. the balance, right, and we could be onto a winner. Let's not let people like assault each other, but yeah, let, let's let let's let a few tackles. Whenever I used to ref at the soccer dome, that's what I used to do. Just let a let a oh, couple of well, I, I used to let them absolutely <laughs> kick lumps out of each. Just let them fight on the pitch. And then he'd become a ref and I had to get on with it. Stop being mad. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes it then feel bad, you know what I mean? Like just I'm not I'm I, seriously, unless it's like a genuine assault, yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. like letting the game flow because <laughs> I can't be bothered getting my other. I'd rather him argue with each other. So that was my attitude towards it. But I wasn't a Premier League referee, I was a barman covering for a referee on the five <laughs> side pitch now and again. Um anyway, right? It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's the most revolutionary ball trimmer the world has ever seen. Yes, our friends at Manscaped have dared to dream and they've taken it one step further. We used to think, right, that Performance Package 4.0 was the pinnacle of below the waist grooming. We were wrong, because Manscaped have come out with the Ultra 5.0, the Law Mower 5.0, it is unbelievable. This is the biggest advancement, not just in the below the waist grooming technology, I think it's the biggest advancement in technology yeah, in general. Yeah, they said it couldn't be done. If they said it couldn't be done, Manscaped went, shut up, it can, and we're gonna do it, and they have done. And using the code DEVILS20, checking out the link in the description, you can get free shipping and 20% off. Now, not only are you getting the biggest advancement in the below the waist grooming technology ever with the Ultra 5.0, you're also getting your crop preserver, yeah. your crop toner, Brilliant. your shed travel bag to put everything in, your boxer briefs, your weed whacker for your nose and ear hair. Yeah, mm. we all want to keep that sort of cushy, don't we? Yeah, as, yeah, yeah. As they say. Also, you get your nail clippers too. You've got everything you can want there. It is the ultimate gift for someone or 
if you deserve it, get it yourself. You might want to treat yourself or treat those around you because if you're looking good down there, everyone's looking better. So go and check out the link in the description. Use the code DEVILS20. You get 20% off. You get free shipping. You get the Performance Package 5.0. You get the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. You get the Crop Preserver, the Crop Toner, the Boxer Briefs, the Anti-Chafing Technology. You get all that good stuff. What more do you want? Free shipping, 20% off. It's all there for you. Thank you. Your balls will thank you. And thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this podcast. Um, thank you, Manscaped. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about, if we can move the man, that, yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> 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 Quickly, on United Youth, what are you laughing at? Uh, just, <laughs> there, there, there. It's just funny, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's about trimming your balls, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Um, do you not do that? I love trimming your balls. Oh, yeah, mate. For a living? It looks like a for babby, a living. It looks like a, a babby's head. No, did he? One of the kebabs that you get from <laughs> yeah. Wigan. Yeah, especially with the Manscaped 5.0. Can't go wrong. Um, let's talk about the academy. The steps up this season. That's a topic. We saw a new hero emerge no, yesterday. F- f- balls to the academy. <laughs> David Pratt. <Prater. laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Willie Camboala. Eh? Willie. Yeah. Very good. Big very troll. Yes, I get it. I get the yeah. reference. Um, he steps up yesterday, probably our sixth choice centre back, yeah. and he ends up starting against the Scousers because we've just had horrific uh, injuries in defence. And I thought he did very well indeed. What did you make of him? I think I think he I think he's and just having a little look at uh, certain uh, media outlets on him on Big Willie. He's he's got his mindset like fully on being a, a United player. Mm. He's got a lot of drive. He's talked about being a United fan. He's talked about him himself wanting to be the best he can be. So to get opportunities like Liverpool at Old Trafford, there was no. There, I don't think there's any doubt in his, his mind that he was going to step up and give his all for United. And that's kind of what you want. If, if Ten Hag's trying to build himself a team, he wants to build himself a team of players that actually want to be there and want to be the best that they can be. And I think that's what uh, Cambola is going to do and hopefully will do. I mean, how many more opportunities he'll get between now and the end of the season? Because obviously with injuries and, and more of the centre-backs coming in, it'll be difficult, well, but definitely one for the... For the future, Tenag's obviously introduced him into the squad from quite a while ago because he's seen something in him. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And he and he's got when he's had the opportunity, even before yesterday, he's he's never looked really out of place. No. And um, I think he's got a lot of the attributes that are quite necessary now to be an elite centre half, especially in the Premier League. And the way it's gone is he looked quick, he looked powerful, he looked strong, and he looked really, really good in his jaws yeah. against Nunes. And I I said before the game yesterday, I think. Playing against Darwin Nunes is really difficult because he's so powerful, he's a bit erratic, he's unpredictable, he's got a little bit of needle about him and he never really lets the centre half get a moment's rest and it feels like he almost rolls to the challenge a little bit because we've said a lot of things about um, players and their attributes at United in terms of their ability but I think even when we're looking to sign players or we're looking to introduce players into the squad, I think United do need to start looking at the type of characters and the type yeah. of mentality that players have because I think that's... Um, very underrated those mm-hmm. types of intangibles when it comes to excelling or being a top performer at a club like Manchester United where you, you're under scrutiny you're yeah. under a lot of pressure and I think Willy Kambuala showed a lot yesterday in terms of that and that's one of the things that we actually compliment, compliment Mainu about as well and Mainu Ganacho and um, Willy Big Willy have shown a lot of that so yeah, yeah. it seems like Carrington's um Strikes again. So so Ferg used to say, didn't he? he? Didn't look at the player. He looks at the person. Like he looks at the personality, whether they could go. Yeah. And it was a big part of whether he decided to go for someone or promote them or whatever. It wasn't just about their ability because yeah. you know there's there's a lot of top level footballers who are in terms of their ability good enough I to think, play for I United. I think we start to see personality become like a major part of like recruitment yeah. when yeah. it comes to. And I, I think that's a, that's where United have gone wrong a, a quite a lot as well. And mm-hmm. it's about oh, creating right. that kind of environment. Look at some of the players we've had that you would have thought that they're that they're good enough or they should succeed at United and have flopped. And there's a multitude of reasons. It's not just personality, but there's somewhere you do think that they didn't have the right sort of personality or even attitude, if you want to say that, to, to work at United. Mm. Or they weren't happy at United or they couldn't cope with it at United or the the heart wasn't in it, whatever. You go back to that people like Angle Di Maria, Memphis Depay would yeah, say that, yeah, that yeah. were looked at as, oh, these, you know, could do the job at United and they never got going. Do you know what I mean? It seems like that was some of those, and it's not just those two, more recently we've had a lot of signings where you look at it and you go, that's probably not, no, you know, even like someone like maybe even a Lukaku, I know his record on paper isn't that bad, but 
Did he really succeed at United? Not qu quite. No. I'm being honest. No. There was a there the was reason a, we sold him on a loss. There was a piece that Henry Winter put out um, when that Dan Ashworth rumor started about coming to United. Yeah, and he was speaking about how Dan Ashworth got this laptop and it just contains everything to know about a player. But one of the things he prioritised is personality. Yeah. So I mean that is literally perfect for, for, for us going forward, isn't it? No, that's what we need. We need a bit more of that because it does feel like we've just signed players based on great name as well, though, isn't it? What? Big, big, big Willie. I just big Willie. Yeah. Big yeah. Willie. Loads of people yeah. in the comments are absolutely loving it. What did he what what say? Um, some that I can read out, some that I can't. Because well, you find the ones you can't. Obviously, one of the key things for uh, uh, I just want to keep your eye on on rugby union <laughs> is um, is the All Blacks have a no dickhead rule. The All Blacks New Zealand's team. They have a no dickhead rule. How's that work? Even if you're the best player, if you're a dickhead, you don't get in. Right. Personality, you, if, you, if you're going to cause disruption in the team because of your own sort of driving ego, you're just done. Right. No, you're not even getting a look in because everyone has to be all fighting for the same team. And I think that's sort of, obviously, the most successful team in, in, in rugby. Yeah. And they've always kept to that. And personality has always been key because you've got to be part of the team and you've always got to be trying to reach for that one goal yeah. and I think certain players like you've mentioned haven't got it no no I agree um, no, hit, hit that like button what are you saying I, I can already think of like for, uh, Go on. a headline for, it, for the first time that um, Willie Camboala gets sent off Go on. rush of blood from Big Willie rush of blood from it's Big good Willie. Jesus wept. Yeah, yeah. That's what. That's Very what, good. That's what for 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 the, the late night live. What about, yeah. what about if we get so good we gave him a statue? Go on. Outside of Big Willie's erect statue. Oh, <laughs> Jesus, Jesus it? Christ. Yeah, that's that's Big even Willie's better. Willie's statue's been erected. Um, <laughs> Brian Casey says Willie was rock solid at the back. Saying oh, that. Hey, hey. Yeah. Yeah. So, so someone said something here <laughs> it's got absolutely no nothing to do with what he, what he did he's just trying to get filth into the chat um, <laughs> what was it what was it he said Willie penetrated that box that doesn't make any that, that's nothing to do with I don't think he ever went that's what box. I mean that's just I'm going to be dirty uh, Akash Paul has been a member of the first team for two months says a uh, good example talking about decisions gone against us was early on in the season versus Spurs away Palestri beats Davis in the box gets his legs clipped surprise surprise not given. Um, just while we're on the topic of youngsters, I think any excuse to talk about Kobe Maynard, you mentioned him earlier, Ronnie. Got his goal yesterday. I don't even think yesterday was one of his better games. No, 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 he, that was one of the games that he struggled the most. Yeah. I thought I thought outside of his goal, Maynard, he, he actually struggled yesterday. He looked a bit leggy you know, maybe yeah. or some, just wasn't quite his day, but has a little bit of magic in him. And that's what the best players do. Yeah. And yeah. I, I expected, I expect that was my concern. He was being, he's been so consistent and been so, like probably our best midfielder for the past, what, few months as an 18-year-old. Yeah. Since he come in. In, some, in, a, in a system that we keep saying week and week out is dysfunctional, doesn't exactly help midfielders. I was always concerned about there is eventually he's going to be due like a bit of a, of a of not a stinker, but like where he can't perform to his normal levels just because there's so much like responsibility that the shoulder or in, yeah. in the midfield already and um, yesterday you, you saw it he struggled for large parts of the game but then what the best players do is they're able to produce like world class moments and that's exactly why Colby Mane is world class no I, you know what I agree <laughs> it, no, someone, right, you know who right. used to do that a lot <laughs> Rooney no, he didn't. Yeah. Rooney could be. Like, people yeah, think yeah. Rooney would give you 90 yeah. minutes where he's amazing. He wouldn't. I watched Wayne Rooney every game he ever played with United. He could be having a game where you're like, what is up with Rooney today? And then he'd just do something like what Maynou yeah. did and shut you up. You've got to keep yeah. him on like, the pitch a little bit because you just don't know what he can pull out. Yeah. I mean, it's somewhat, in terms of their spark, a little bit like Bruno because obviously you, you look past uh, Maynou's goal because Bruno's goal was uh, some finish, but he's always got something like that in him, hasn't he? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a little bit of magic. So that's why you probably... Yeah. You best keep him on the pitch because yeah. you, when you want to, I, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm kind of with Ronnie on that. Like I don't know. I just feel that you've got to be careful as well because if he looks a bit knackered, we are in danger of just ruining this poor lad. Like, I know he's that good. You think well, you can't ruin him, but you've got to at least be mindful of when he's not having his best day. And yeah. surely we should have other options as well. It's not just like we have to have this 18-year-old on the pitch constantly because there's no other way. There's, you, you should be able to sort of mix it up and just even like yesterday, you get 75 minutes out yeah. of him, and it's a game like that against Liverpool because there was times when Liverpool were attacking and there was a, I think it's probably been highlighted. You probably saw it, but like Casemiro dived in 
and was oh. nowhere near the, the ball oh, or the man. Phenomenal. And then all of a sudden you've got Kobe Mainu with like three players against him. Was that the last chance? Was that one of the last tackles of the game, by the way, when Liverpool got a free kick on the edge of the box? I can't believe he did that, you know. Casemiro <laughs> <can't laughs> I think it's <laughs> if really this goes in now, if this goes in now, because obviously we've got flashbacks of being on the watch long. Uh, uh, we fought four three. I think this is fucking. You, you've not seen, obviously we saw the replays as well because you was at the game. That is, yeah. Replays. The challenge was proper bad, you know. It was what's really it? Bad. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, like it was like was a little bit more aggressive. It, it, it could be sent off for that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, in the and it, yeah. it made yeah. no sense. In, in your defensive third, like Joel said, yeah. where you've got ten seconds left, where you just defend. And he's gone, let me just wipe you out. <laughs> it so, was so you, crazy. So you can cross the ball into the box one more time. Do you know what I mean? Right, I don't know. We've not really spoke about it yesterday. Do you know who I'm warming to a little bit? You're going to hate me. You're going to hate me. What, I, a I, player? No. Behave. Wash your mouth out. Well, no. Well, why would we hate you? Because he's not the most popular player, and I've slagged him off a little bit. Not slagged him off, but I've criticised him, which is the same thing. Anthony, Anthony, oh. right? <laughs> Anthony, something about him, like, Anthony, Anthony losing his head yesterday. I was actually with him. You know when he lost it? Did you oh, see he it? Switched. He switched yeah. and then he had to be dragged away. <laughs> he's horrible, isn't he? That's what it is. He's horrible. Like, he's, he's got, he's got a proper small man syndrome. Yeah, 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 that's it. But I was kind of like, yeah, do you know very, what? He's very eruptible, which it, is yeah. why a lot of people... Yeah. Yeah, I think the the only issue is like People when he was through on goal that time near the end, he just know that he, he ain't oh, scoring. Yeah. I have flashbacks though. <laughs> I like it's like Diallo's. Goal I know, there. but do I just thought, do yeah, you get a bit concerned or when when he looks like that. A little, a little bit, yeah. I do, I do get a little bit concerned. <laughs> Especially, well, um, I think in the last few in the last few weeks, <laughs> I'm ignoring him. In the last few weeks, <laughs> oh, I think he's been right. better than he has been. Probably since he arrived. I know he got that those few goals when he first arrived, but he's starting to show little bits. It's just. Consistently, he's nowhere near there. Is what about it? what about Maguire then? Because I thought he played brilliant. Well. I thought he did well yesterday. I thought he was, I thought he was classic. Yeah. Like so, so do, you think, do you think obviously losing the armband and losing that pressure of being United captain, making focus a little bit more on being the best set of my captain. Do you know what captain. I like? It's about him. He, he right, he's lost the armband. It didn't stop him doing what he needed to do. No, he was still in the refs here when he needed to be. He was still chatting to his teammates, trying to come by the car a lot. It's like he's not gone. Well, I'm not a captain anymore, so I'm going to spit my dummy out and you know stop speaking to people. Um, I thought he, I play, thought he played very well. There's a lot to yeah. admire about what Maguire's done because he's obviously he was up against it. He was getting criticised left, right, and centre. He's come back into the team and he's got on with it. And he, you know he did it in November where he got Player of the Month, and now against Liverpool, I thought he put in a very very good performance. Uh, just quickly, Akash Paul's gifted five straight for Paddock memberships. A big thank you Love to that. you. Love that. Uh, it really does help the channel out. Cash got the cash. I don't know. Nice. Just uh, just on Maguire, who's oh, that uh, Carl Anker do with the Athletic podcast? Who's it's a good listen. They do good it after. Down. They do it after the game at Old Trafford, and he was like, uh, oh, "If you can hear noise and, and you can hear kickabouts, it's because Maguire's on the pitch with his kids, and they're all wearing Maguire tops with uh, United tops with Maguire on the back." And I'm thinking he still sees the club as part of his family, even though he had the troubles that happened earlier on the season. Losing the armband couldn't be easy, but he's got his head screwed on a little bit. You know that sort of like. Do you know? Do you know what I mean? Like sort of family around the club. He's, he's kind of. I feel like we're missing it a little bit since mm. since Fergie That's left. One thing you can compliment Maguire on, though, in it, like he's he's very um he's very f in a way he's fixed f for what he's been received in terms of scrutiny and, and some mm. some hate. A lot, some of it, a lot of it's been justified because he was he's not he weren't performing. He's making mistakes, but he's he's quite resilient, though, isn't he? Yeah. He's so like people like he was. Uh, there was a time, and I think I said it. He was damned if he did, and he's damned if he, damned if he didn't. Like when he was sticking up for himself, or his family was sticking up. For himself, people were pushing back when he started to say, you know, I, I'm, you know, look at look at what I've done. Look at I play for England, I play for United. People saying, oh, you're arrogant. And I think mm, if he didn't say that, or he didn't do anything, people would sort of criticise him for being too soft or whatever. Yeah. I think he's a good player. I just, is he probably good enough to start for Manchester United if everyone's fit? Probably not. But as a backup centre back, hundred percent. I think he's thirty. Yeah, he's, he's, getting, he's getting on now. Yeah, yeah. It, it would have been very easy for him, especially when he was getting all that hate. It would have been very easy for him to cover sorry. away and just, just not fall out of love with the club, but just sort of turn mm. his back a little bit. Mm. The amount he was getting was horrendous. I've never, I'd never seen anything like yeah, it. Yeah, it was. It was bad. And to be fair, I was part of it. Not, not, <laughs> it just like, not slagging him off online, but I'd be on here going, Maguire's a bit shit, isn't he? Well, yeah, and, I don't think you have to pretend, everyone has to pretend that he's always been great for United. I was very much like, part of it. Like, there was that, he had a spell where he just was, it wasn't happening for him. He was awful at times. But, like you say, he's shown that resilience. He's got on with it. And he's now become an important part of the team. You're looking at the amount of injuries we've got. Thank God he has. Because I was watching for a lot. Because I said this, like his mentality he has shown in comparison. Because obviously yesterday when I had a discussion with Abdullah about, about Rashford, because they're two players that I've received 
in different ways a lot of criticism and I think it does it's, it is commendable in a way to, to some the way that Maguire's kind of been resilient to it compared to um, the other person do you know what I mean yeah. but I don't want to say that because Adullah might be after me <laughs> right um, <laughs> fair enough um, <laughs> just on Ten Hag quickly I want to talk about his, his future and where this leaves him he's fucking because I don't know what to say about it. I just don't it's know it's it's weird, isn't it? I, I feel like I can't definitively say one way or the other how Ineos are going to handle it, because it's not like he's in a position where you go, he's completely unsackable, because he ain't. And it's not I don't mean now. I mean at the end of the season. But there's still an argument that they may look at it and go, okay, you've had injuries. Okay, it's been a bit of a shambles in terms of the structure. Okay, you did enough in that first season, and maybe if he wins mm-hmm. the FA Cup this season, where we'll still back you. Yeah, where where, well, where where do you see this going? I see, you see, the, the if you look at United in terms of what they might be looking at, and they'll look at United a little bit like a business, and in the business they'll have goals, so they'll probably have monetary goals as long alongside football goals. Yeah, and I think they'll they'll be planning, and every year we'll have a plan. They'll have a plan where they want to be in four years. They'll know what season they want to win the Premier League in. ASAP, won't they? Because that's what the plan is. And if they're seeing this chaotic football a little bit from Ten Hag, where they can't get the consistency, then maybe I think it might be a little nail on the coffin where they go, ah, we just can't put our resources and millions of pounds in this map. Yeah. It's spent. Yeah, I, I just don't know. Because it feels like every week's crazy to watch. You know I mean? One thing I will say is there's been no performances. Mm. We, we occasionally get the win, but when you're watching them, you have no idea what's going to happen. Even when we were getting spanked at half time against Liverpool, I thought hmm, there might be a, there might, we might actually bring this back because it's That's so chaotic. Yeah. Yeah. You, have, you, have, you have no idea what's going to happen at any point in the game. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen either. I, I, don't think, know I, what's going I think it's really very 50 50. Um, Ineos have kept their cards yeah. quite close to the chest. You've got a lot of journalists out there guessing, but I'm not sure. Do you want him to stay? Do I want him? Um, do you know what? I've become a lot more indifferent to it because. Oh, yeah. I, I think if if he's kept on, you can see probably why they've done it. Thinking maybe is there someone better out there as a manager? Did he want to reset again about possibly giving him another year for time? You could see why they might do that. But in another sense, I think the regression that we've seen from United this season and kind of some of the, te- the like the deterioration in like the tactics and the way he's kind of operated in like press conferences and in interviews. It's a lot of his interviews now do kind of stink of the ones that managers do when they know they're, they're on the brink, the brink of, of going do you yeah. know what I mean almost like you're not understanding where he's coming yeah. from and what he's saying and he, there's this kind of sense of like delusion and sometimes yeah. of the, the things that he's saying I don't know I feel like he's personally I started to drift towards like feeling like we did need a change because I couldn't see like the direction that we yeah. were being taken in under 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 Ten Hag right now, especially because it's not even like the sample size has been that small. Yeah. yeah, it's been like seven eight months of like torrid performance after performance after performance. Yeah, that's been littered with the occasional odd result. But I don't know. It's not yeah. United. In, United this season. It's been. It's funny because we, we're on the brink of maybe getting to an FA Cup final, but it's been a little bit of a nightmare oh, compared yeah, to I what see, we expected it to be like coming off of last the, season. The table's mm. looking a little bit worrying as well. When you the table's the awful one reading. One I've not been looking at it in some I don't think he keeps we very it. Li- we could very likely finish ninth. Yeah. 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 No, no, it's and then you can't keep Newcastle, can you? West Ham yeah. and Chelsea could all catch us before easily before the end of the season. I don't think weirdly there's no... I don't, I don't want... The resentment towards okay. Sanag, there isn't... Much resentment, yeah. I don't really dislike him. Do you know, like when we were kind of no, sort of always. not, we're yeah, we got always. we got to the point where we disliked him. I just feel like it might come to its natural conclusion. Don't you know, your relationship with someone, and there's no sort of dramatic breakup. It's just that you both kind of know that this might yeah. not be for you. Let's give it a rest. Just give it a rest. Sort of thing. What about you? Do you want to see him stay? Or do you think you will? You can answer both. I, I, <laughs> probably like you. I think I'm more towards him going. But who do we go to? That that's that that's what I'd say. I know there's talk of Motta, but is he really proven enough at the highest level to take the United job? It's not an easy job to take. Do you know what I mean? That's that's where I'm at. If we could find a suitable replacement, then maybe I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah the only concern is um, 
the, there is there's a gamble with both decisions. There's a gamble 100%. with keeping Tanago and there's a gamble with um, sacking him because if you sack him and you start again with another manager yeah. and you're not sure whether he he could either set the world alight and then we almost like fast track the rebuild a little bit and it could be the change that we needed or it could just be like we're back to square one. And then the issue is you keep Tanago for another year and then he just continues to be just as bad as he's been for the past six or seven months. And if anything, United then get deeper into a hole. Yeah. And then we're basically six to nine months back in a yeah, hole, basically. Cost, yeah. Do you know what I mean? That, that's yeah. how much it costs and us. And the expertise of scouting and manager. You know, we've got all these amazing uh, talents coming into the board. Barada coming in, but he's obviously had the luxury of working alongside uh, Pep, who's a world-class manager. Ashworth as well, who, you know, he's, he's incredible at scouting players and bringing them into the team. Well, making sure you pick the right guy to actually be the man who's on the touchline that's difficult that yeah same, same as players for the United job you need a strong personality mm. a, a manager needs as much personality as a player does you can't go into the United job and sort of whimper away yeah, from it because yeah. it's the biggest job in the world it's probably the most scrutiny mm. in the world that you're going to get especially when we're doing bla- badly because you know what people are like they jump on it as soon as we start playing badly That that that's that's just a thing isn't nah, it no I I I still, I've been saying this for ages, I still think you can sort of take stop when the end of the season comes and see where we've got to, see if we have lifted that FA Cup. Even if we don't do, you know, get into the Champions League, which is highly unlikely anyway, or we flop in the league, if he won the FA Cup, I think that's enough to give him another season. I think back to back trophy wins. Yeah. Two seasons where we won a trophy. Won we haven't done that since I think 2009 or something. But crack is a I mean, it's, a, it's, I know it's not there. the same as when Fergie won back to back titles or whatever, but I still think that could be enough for him to go, okay, you won the <laughs> FA Cup. That is a big trophy. Let's give you, you know, let's give you one more season <laughs> under this structure at least. Under this structure is what I, I said when we went on the overlap. Um, Martin Darcy Tenag is done for his presses getting weird too they are getting a bit odd his presses he doesn't he doesn't do himself any favours in press conferences he's not one of the managers like who's got a bit of charisma or warm for personality where the press will get on board with him you know like Poster Coglu yeah everyone loves him because he's like mm. one of the lads funny what, yeah. do you, what do you expect from a man that wears his United tracksuit to the beach I love that you love that, don't you? Yeah, I, I love think that. it's weird. I think it's meant. He wears that same Adidas. Even when, even when they go, even yeah, exactly. Even when they go to like the Ivy for like he's a got that Adidas you know, jacket. He's on. got like jeans on and like a, and, a, and a cap, and then yeah. he's got his ETH United. He gets some. He on. gets. He gets some jackets for free. He's making the most out of it. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah, free get free. Part of the job. It's in his contract. Can I get free jackets? Yeah, yeah. Sound. <laughs> Can I have as many as one. Yeah, yeah. Nice I think. One. I think we're in for some. Crazy games before now and the end of the season. I mean, Proper, to, be, to be honest like, with you, because if you've got Bournemouth on the weekend, then that's oh, not going to sure. yeah. That's a horrible. That's a horrible game. Arsenal, as Dominic well. Solanke, Coventry, banging which I think him in. We'll just have enough to beat Coventry. Um, who knows who will meet in the FA Cup final? That might be a blockbuster. Well, imagine imagine good, that. We have no idea if we're going to beat Coventry yeah. or not. Um, um, yeah. Great. What they in the championship? All right. No, they're all right. What? Who's who? Ipswich, uh, Leeds, and, uh, who's everyone? Leicester are all going for it, aren't they? Uh, Finn Hall says, need to cash in on anyone that's not in future plans. We need the DOS to reinvest. Well, the Max says, JB and Anthony Eric's been out for a while. That's a lot of nonsense. I'm stuck up for him constantly. I've been taking grief for it. Um, Jokoya Trot says, I'll keep saying, let Eric and I see out his contract. And if there are plans to move on, start planning on so by the end of next season the new manager gets a smooth transition do you remember when we were going to have all this smooth transition yeah. with Ragnick and Eric Tanak yeah, never worked. and they didn't when even did meet he, uh, when is his contract up what did he get three years I think so I think it's is it end of next is it? season three years I think yeah let's have a look can we find out if, uh, it's 18 if months, is it? Eric Tanak we don't give massive contracts to managers he'll be almost two years no. in now is it yeah uh, we'll, we'll try and find out we'll out. try and we'll try and see how, how long he got um Sorry, yeah. Until the end, until June 2025, with the option of right. extending for a further That's year. A long contract. So, yeah, remember, remember when we gave David Moyes a six-year oh deal? My God. That worked out well, didn't it? Um, Wally of the week time. Give us your Shit, Wally of the weeks. Ball, 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 ball. What do you mean? I forgot about Wally of the week. You never tell me it's happening. But, but you know, Maybe you've I'm done Wally this enough week. now. You are Maybe right, I'm Ronnie. Wally you've had enough warning. Go on. Clop. Clop. That's the obvious tap one, in, isn't it? Tapping tap there, we have to. He annoyed me with that Kwambuala challenge, and he was going mad at the ref. He should have. And then the ref listened to him. Bore yeah. off. Um, could just give it to all scousers, really. Yeah, that's true. I think that's the major point because I'm I'm well on board with the with the Arsenal title running now. 
Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I just can't. I just wouldn't want to. You just can't be a night fan and want Liverpool to win this title this season. Cops farewell, unbearable. I, I, I've told you, right? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, you've been telling me for a while, innit? I was like, oh, I hate all three clubs, so it's it's difficult, but. Uh, I'll give it Arsenal. Yeah, Arsenal. I, I, I love it. I know it sounds a bit stretched, but I love it if Arsenal won it compared to the overall series. I don't care. Like should, should we play the 18s? Yes. Against them. Yeah, they they just won 9-1 against Arsenal. Liverpool. Yeah. Pull them in the team. Can you imagine what would happen in Merseyside if we did that? There'd be petitions... <laughs> Really crazy, yeah, nice. be, if Eric did that right, I'd give him another five year deal. Yeah. Yeah. If he went, do you know I what? For would. this for this right, um in goal, we're gonna give this youngster the, the chance. He's we'll, making we'll, his uh, debut. We'll He's do, gonna go in goal. <laughs> we'll do like Fenerbahce did. Just yeah. let him let him score one and then just walk off the pitch <laughs> and just sack it off. That's what they did with their nineteen. Honestly, I know I know it sounds like proper sad and bitter, but I don't care. Arsenal winning the Premier League I can live with. Liverpool doing it in the clocks last season to catch us on titles would be absolutely horrible. Right, so you're going Klopp. Did you, did you say Klopp, sorry? Yeah. Did, yeah did. you say? My, mine's personal. Mine's personal. It's well, that. Have you seen the? Is it Russ Cook, the bloke who ran the oh, of Africa? Yeah, 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 go on. I like this one. Have you seen? Have you seen when he finishes the run? No. Oh, right. There is some absolute helmet. You are a helmet, whoever he is. I hope he's watching. Basically, six eight. By the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a big guy. Yeah. Um, Don't mess. He's running next to this Russ Cook. <laughs> he runs past him and goes through the rhythm before oh, he finishes. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's such a muppet. Yeah, yeah. That is he's such he's a he's run, dickhead oh, move, that's, right? Innit? I didn't know who you are. That's just tight. Yeah. Yeah. Fuckers run the length of Africa. And he's he's run through <laughs> the rhythm before <laughs> he. Has. Funny though, isn't <laughs> I think it's hilarious. <laughs> He's going to go on to his nation and be like, yeah, I just beat the bloke who ran the one for Africa. Yeah. yeah. Crazy, I hate all that though. Like when people do things like that. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. when, who was it? When they won Oppenheimer won the Bafton and there's one of them YouTubers. He's like, oh, Frank's yeah, getting up there. <laughs> yeah. I was like, there. I can't be doing with any of that nonsense. Go on. Who's uh, your right, one right. Mine's about food. So don't be shocked. But I went to a place for Sunday tea before the, uh, the Liverpool United game. And only the person who got the beef got a Yorkshire pudding. Because apparently that's the tradition, and what? I got the chicken, and I didn't get any Yorkshire puddings. Really? So I fucking. Where was this? I don't want to name it, but <laughs> it's near Cliverow. We're going out. Really? Yeah. I, I thought he was going to say I'm not going to name it then, but then just. Yeah, nah. Really so it's near Cliverow. Yeah, but I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. So what? If you but ordered, yeah. the, you ordered a. a apparently, cabaret. you only get Yorkshire puddings with the beef. That's nah. tradition. That's no. why some people no. don't have it on Christmas Day. Yeah. Because obviously that's turkey. So I had to call my Wally the week back. Yeah. Well, I suppose it wasn't their fault. But just ask, can I have a couple of Yorkshire puddings? Did he give it to you? Yeah, of course. He did. Oh, right. oh, <laughs> wasn't uh, Ross Murphy says, Wally of the Week, Gabby Bognahor, cause, just because this week he's had another go at Man United, as always. Um, I, I don't know who to go for, Wally of the Week. I just feel like just VAR or refs or whatever, all of them from last week. I think we just got had over a bit, didn't we? It's got so a like, 40s. Just annoying, just annoying, man. It could have been so much better than it was, and I still think I don't think any of them were penalties. I don't care what anyone says. Um, right, I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. Uh, Ronnie, thanks for joining us as always. Um, Sam, thanks you for coming on for the second time. Hopefully, we'll get you on for the actual yeah. sooner or later. Joe, yeah, I'll I'll let you plug something. Cause yeah, I'll keep plug something. Plug. Can everyone go watch the Sloppy Joe's podcast with me and Ethan? What do you mean you want him to plug something? Will you, you plug something? Have you got to plug something? Plug something. Go on, plug something. Plug Sloppy Joe's. I'm not plugging anything. I didn't <laughs> think you would. Did you say Sloppy Joe's podcast? Yeah, no, it's on you. all your apps. Right, no, oh, just you know what? Stop it, you. Um, <laughs> right. That's been Ronaldo. That's been Sam. That's been Joe McGrath. I'm Jay Moy. Don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.